there are people that create problems, right? There are people that see problems and ignore them. And then there are people that see problems and then choose to work at resolving them even if they didn't create them. Hmm. Well, she was born in 1917, and so she lived through the Great Depression. If anybody came to her and asked her for something, if she could give it, she would give it. And if she couldn't, she would try to find somebody in the community who could provide that need, make them believe that someone cared about them. We knew her as a very nice woman who was involved in the community. She was connected to a family that had a big foundation that provided grant money to not-for-profits. And When she said, what are you going to do with unlimited resources, we got a whole crew of people together. And one of the things was on a walk-in freezer, because we were turning away a lot of perishable items. If he could have anything he wanted, what would it be? And he said, a refrigerator. And she said, yeah, you got to think bigger. <laughs> got a building. We received a grant of a quarter of a million dollars to start Millie's Pantry. With the idea that it could become a center of generating money to fund community programs particularly aimed at children. What I really love about this place is that it has continued to evolve since the beginning. The artists and craftspeople whose goods we sell on consignment, the food producers whose products we feature on our shelves, the baker on the second floor who contributes a portion of the money that she realizes from baking that she does in our building, exercise and dance teachers who teach classes on the third floor and contribute part of what they make here. That's the other side of the story, that there really is an economic development piece that's going on here. Since we started, the amount of income income that we brought into Millie's Pantry has been about $1.3 million. The presence of this building on Main Street provides an opportunity to enlighten, educate. No one really comes in without being told about our mission and the work that we do here and the children that we help feed and the poverty that is evident in this community. In a way, we're sort of spreading the word and hopefully sensitizing people, opening people's eyes to, to what's around them. I think it starts with compassion. If we don't have compassion, then we are very likely to miss seeing the person right in front of us. Look at, you know, where the needs are and see if you can answer some of those needs. We want to leave the world a better place than how we found it, and it's hard to affect that on a really large scale. However, if we begin to affect change within our own communities, that can be that pebble that you throw in the pond and it creates ripples. We wanted to tell people about Millie's Pantry because it's grown so far beyond Millie's original vision, hasn't it? It has. All the things that are happening, economic development, there are businesses in there, art is happening, and it all started with the idea that people needed food. And I know we always talk about money behind philanthropy because that's what we're in the business of doing, but philanthropy is so much more. People think it belongs to the rich, but it doesn't. It belongs to everybody. Everyday people who just happen to notice a problem or an issue or something in their community they, they want to make better. Millie saw a problem, she took action, it expanded beyond the four walls of the pantry and is now just spread throughout the entire community. Our community right now is full of Millie's. They're doing this work every single day. We hope that they see themselves when they see her story.